Did Apple finally make a professional level all-in-one Apple Silicon iMac? Well, I think so. In this video, we're gonna compare the new M4 iMac against the original M1 iMac with this redesign. I'm gonna share all the upgrades, the new features, and the performance, and why I think this machine is incredible. Now, I have been waiting for a powerful Apple Silicon iMac ever since we got the original M1 chip. Year after year, it didn't come, but I think we might have finally got it. And this thing has a lot of awesome surprises. Ooh, it's upside down. <laughs> like that surprise right there. <laughs> oh, wow. Didn't we hold it the right way? Huh, usually we do this at, the, at our desk. But I want to start out not with the beautiful machine that we got in the yellow color, but with this pack. Come on. This is what happens when it's all recyclable. <laughs> Let's make sure we don't drop it. And after years of waiting, we finally have new hardware that is USB type C. Vadim, look at the color on this. I love that braided nice right braided yellow, nice and soft color, more punchy oh, than so before. Cool. I'm gonna take out this mouse and throw the, box the, the power cable. Yes, I don't wanna be dropping <laughs> any of this. Now we have the blue iMac with the M1 that all, <laughs> okay, I don't mean to throw it, but <laughs> it's hard to make videos on such large devices. We have the blue one, we also have the silver one, and this one is this beautiful yellow. Let's peel this back right over here, and we'll take off that sleeve. I love it. Hello iMac right there. Let me keep this exactly as is. And let's open up some of these um, accessories right here. And as you guys could see, we finally have that USB type C. Now we've had to keep lightning around just for connecting and charging these devices up. So it's nice to finally have it be USB type C. Of course, on the mouse, we still have the charge port at the bottom here, but five minutes gets me weeks of use. And oh, you know, just an hour charge or less gets you months of use. I don't think it's that big of a deal. We have all the accessories unpacked and now let's go ahead and peel off that nice large sticker. And here we have that 24 and a half inch display. Now we've wanted a 27 inch ever since we got the uh, M1 Pro, M1 Max. We wanted more performance and that screen size. And this thing isn't bad to be able to use. We've done a lot of editing on our other ones, uh, but a lot of it was performance where it just wasn't enough with the original M1. But with the M4, it's a big upgrade. Now, before I grab that machine, let me go ahead and connect this. And I love the fact that it is magnetic. Let's align it and it should just snap right in. There you go. Beautiful design. Now, one thing that I want to point out is the four ports right here. Not only is the M4 chip more powerful, but all four of these ports are Thunderbolt 4, which is nice. Previously, if you got the upgraded model, you would get two Thunderbolt, two USB Type-C. Now, all four are Thunderbolt, makes it much more of a professional machine. And this thing can actually be connected to two external displays if you would like to do so. And even though the machine is too thin for Ethernet, we have it built in into the power brick, so that is really nice. And now I have my trusty blue M1 iMac right here. And you guys can see that the camera is so much larger on the new M4 model. It has center stage so it can crop in. It could show what's on the desk. That is really cool. But I wanna start getting into the performance. But first, I wanna show you the new fully upgraded Qi 2 battery bank from our sponsor, Charge. This is the new Ice Mag 2, which has a dual cooling system with a little fan that cools down the battery for faster and longer charging. It now has 15 watt Qi 2 wireless charging with MagSafe and a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity. And in this really cool looking transparent design, with an RGB fan. The Ice Mag 2 has a multi-angle folding kickstand, so you can charge hands-free in either 
portrait or landscape. It supports 30 watt fast charging with a USB type C cable and gets you to 50% within 25 minutes. And a really cool feature is that you can charge an additional device with the USB C. So go ahead and check out the Ice Pack 2 using the links in the description and the pinned comment below. And we typically compare one generation to the next. So here we have the M4, but it's gonna be so interesting to see how far we have come. Now the M1, this one does have 16 gigs because you should get that. So that is nice, but I had to pay an extra 200 bucks where now you don't. And of course the chip is much faster, 4.4 gigahertz compared to 3.2. I'm gonna go ahead and run this benchmark. And I think we're gonna be really surprised. And look at the results guys, we have 3729 compared to 2400. That's 56% faster single core performance, a huge boost. This is the highest you can get in any computer on the market with M4. And in terms of multi-core, almost 15,000. That is like 76% faster than 8598. And the crazy thing is when uh, this machine came out, we wanted an M1 Pro or M1 Max version. Well, this almost 15,000 smokes the M1 Max CPU. That is incredible. Now, the next thing I wanna test out are the graphics. Here we have the eight core compared to a 10 core graphics now with a whole new architecture. So let's go ahead and run this. And take a look at the M4 score, 55,357 compared to 34,000. That is 61% faster. Of course, we have two extra cores, but the crazy thing is this has ProRes built in. It has AV1 decoding built in, faster media engines. We just tested the M4 in the 14 inch MacBook Pro with extra tests that you guys can check out. There's so much more optimization, ray tracing. So this is just one number that we can look at, but let's take a look at 3 Mark Steel Nomad Lite. This is going to test out more of a gaming workload on it. And we have 28.2 frames per second compared to 14 and a half. That's 95% better performance, which is massive. And if you're doing something like you use ray tracing, it's gonna be three to four times better performance. So that is a massive step up. And now I have Figma opened up right here. And this project is brought to you by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. And this is a web design application. And we're gonna see what kind of performance difference we get if you're using web apps, which a lot of people do. The first thing I wanna do is zoom into a section right here. And this on the M4, we're gonna see how fast that loads up. And I believe that's loaded up. I think it might have done Instantly, it. Yeah. Instantly, I couldn't even tell a difference. Let's maybe go a little bit lower right over here. Oh my goodness. So fast. You don't have to wait at all. Let's do the same thing on the M4. You see pixelation there? Oh, there it is. So a couple seconds, not bad, but you don't even have to wait with the new M4. And I have 12 high resolution layers selected and I'm gonna go ahead and export this. It's gonna download the files. And I wanna remind you guys, I paid extra to have 16 gigs of RAM here where this one has it built in. If this was an eight gig model, it'd be much lower than this one's gonna be. All right guys, that took two minutes and 15 seconds for that. And the M4 took a minute 29 seconds so that is 52% faster even for web browsing tasks. And a lot of people are using web applications for professional uses now. So that is great. And now I have Cinebench 2024 opened up. This is gonna show us two things. The first, it's gonna pin the CPUs to the max to really test out the performance and two, to see how the cooling system can handle this M4 chip. Can the super thin fans keep up with it? So let's go ahead and run this 10 minute stress test. And oh my goodness, guys, look at this. The fans are kicking up a lot. We're at 102 degrees Celsius on the M4 compared to 90 on the M1. The fans spinning way lower. So you guys see that this M4 chip is using a lot more power. It's requiring more cooling and it's still running hotter. Wait a second, guys, I don't get this. Look at this one. It's now spinning up even higher. Now, it could just be that it's programmed differently because the temperatures are lower, 
but the fans are really kicking up a lot more. Now, I can't easily take these apart to see if Apple updated the heat pipes to make them any better. The fan speeds, the maximums are the same. Uh, or if Apple just is okay with this running hotter, but quieter. And we have our scores and it looks like the M4, it scored 891 points compared to 532. That is 68% faster under full load. It ran hotter, but it ran silently compared to hearing the fan that is in this system. So what does this mean? And can you buy an M4 iMac for professional use? Well, obviously it is way faster. And I have to say a lot of people use M1s for professional tasks that they earned money for. But now with the M4, if you did not have enough graphics performance or enough CPU performance, or just the value wasn't good enough, the M4 brings it all. We have 16 gigs as base for the base model. That is awesome. We have all Thunderbolt ports for accessories. That is great and way better CPU and GPU performance. So if you're somebody that wants to do coding, you want to do video editing, photo editing, um, you want to do a variety of different tasks, this thing can handle it for most people. The only thing you have to ask yourself is if a 24 and a half inch screen is enough and if that graphics performance is enough. Now I think for most people it is. If you need something that is crazy high performance, this has the M4, not a Mac chip in it. And as far as the screen, it's a nice, beautiful display. And if you're okay with 24 and a half inches, I think this is a steal of a deal. It saves you money compared to buying another Mac where you have to add a display, especially if you want an Apple display. Those are 1600 bucks for a 5K. You get the keyboard and mouse in the package for a great price with a very slim, small, you know, nice looking machine. It just does it all. All in one iMac, it is a great value. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe and check out one of those great videos right over there.